Alhamdulillah, 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 wa salatu wa salamu wa srafil, anbiyai wa rmusalim wa nabiyin wa muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa salam. Ashadu ala ilaha illallah, wa ashadu ana muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good evening once again and welcome to The Message. This program is brought to you by the Kubla Islamic Media Foundation and BMPI, Bonsai Masters of the Philippines. This is your host for tonight, Brother Yahya Villanueva. And the program, of course, of course, will not be complete without my partner in crime. That's Brother Saifullah. Brother? Brother? Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, good evening and, and uh, greetings of peace and blessings and mercy of Allah to all of our Muslim brothers and sisters that are listening and uh, greetings of mutual brotherhood and fellowship along with our Christian neighbors and friends and our Jewish neighbors and friends and neighbors of all faiths around the world. Thank you for tuning in tonight and tuning in online. All right, and Brother Saiful, I would also like to give out our contact information. Is that right, Brother? Yes, yes. Let me first let you know, you can text us. Um, you can text us tonight or any time through the week at 0922-604-4233. Again, that's 0922-604-4233. You can email us at islamradio at yahoo.com, islamradio at yahoo.com. You can watch our videos on YouTube at www.youtube.com slash Islam Radio PH. That's Islam Radio PH. PH is for Philippines, of course. <coughs> and uh, oh, also you can download the audio tracks as a podcast from IslamRadio.mypodcast.com. Now we share all of the online information with the program on Thursday night from eight until nine, which is Women in Islam which is also sponsored by the Hubala Islamic Media Foundation and Bantai Masters of the Philippines. Right. Uh, before we start uh, the program, Rose I would just like to uh, inform you that uh, last Monday we were a guest at uh, an FM station, that's 89.9, and they just, you know, sort of asked uh, a lot of questions about Islam. Yeah, and uh, they were asking for your presence, but I told them that Rose I is uh, really busy right now and they're looking forward to uh, you know uh, having you at the station that's 89.9 at our station yeah I was really uh, I was really disappointed that it came at a time when I couldn't come and uh, I'm I welcome any opportunity to to sit and be a guest but you know because of my schedule it does need to be planned a little bit further in advance right okay so tonight um I do believe we're going to the his we're going to do the history of Islam, Brother Saifu. That's right. You know, one of the biggest problems facing our community today is that we have no respect for the grand history that we should lay claim to as Muslims. We continue to fight the same struggles over and over within the community because of heavy division along racial and national lines. It is our goal tonight and next week to bring a complete outline of the history of Islam from the death of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, until now, so that we can all be on the same page with the past that we have led as a global community and have a better understanding with the way Islam spread throughout the world. Right, and one of the biggest misconceptions is that Islam was spread by the sword. This is because there were many battles fought in the spread of Islam. The truth, however, is that this, as Islam spread through the power of the message of the Quran and the pure written word of God, the leaders of various kingdoms felt threatened by this new power and attacked newly converted Muslims. Yes, and you know, this is not very different from the kind of persecution that was faced by the Jews after the prophethood of Moses, or the Christians within the first few centuries, or even the kind of persecution that Protestants faced from the Catholic Church when they initially tried to break away. This is a major part of why Allah commanded Muslims to defend each other and establish the laws of warfare so that a very there would be a honor on the battlefield that had been not known for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. It was due to this very high level of mercy and honor in combat that so many former enemies of Islam converted as soon as the war was over when they were given the option. It is often circulated as a lie that these people were forced to convert to Islam. In fact, 
from the time of the Prophet Muhammad until today, there are literally thousands of examples where Christian and Jewish communities have been allowed to live in peace under Muslim rule. One of these examples is in Muslim Spain, where the Jews prospered so much under the rule of the Caliphate that it is referred to in Jewish history as the golden years of the Jews. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, happened several hundred years later. We want to take our listeners on a journey that begins with the first caliph and ends today. Yes, I got a little ahead of myself again. But, okay, so after our beloved prophet died, Abu Bakr was appointed by the Ummah to be the leader and the first caliph of Islam. After he was elected, Abu Bakr addressed the Ummah saying, O oh people, I have been chosen by you as your leader, although I am no better than any of you. If you do any good, if I do any good, Give me your support. If I do any wrong, set me right. Listen, truth is honesty and untruth is dishonesty. The weak among you are powerful in my eyes as long as I do not give them their due. While the powerful among you are weak in my eyes as long as I do not take away from them what is due to others. Listen carefully. If people give up striving for the cause of Allah, he will send down disgrace upon them. If people became evildoers, Allah will send down calamities upon them. Obey me as long as I obey Allah and his messenger. If I disobey Allah and his messenger, you are free to disobey me. In this speech, Abu Bakr illustrated his humility and intense devotion to the social responsibility of zakat, as well as his responsibility as a religious leader. That's right, but one of the biggest problems facing the first caliphs were the dozens of false prophets that popped up after the death of Muhammad, peace be upon him. That's right. Now, all of the Sahaba pledged allegiance to him, that being Abu Bakr. However, in the outlying areas of the new Islamic empire, people claimed to have been given visions and used this as a way to gain material wealth. This is completely opposite of what Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did. Mm. Now, it was because of this high crime of treason to the new Islamic State and the exhibition of disbelief on the highest order that Abu Bakr was forced to send soldiers to these areas to force the false prophets to renounce their claims. Mm -hmm. And in addition to this, a large number of people refused to pay zakat, saying that it was only to be paid to the Prophet wasalam, and that since he was dead, that zakat was not required anymore. Now, we, we talked last week about how important zakat is to the social well-being of the community. This section of the population refusing to pay the poor tax was enough to destabilize the social order of the larger community, and it was for this reason that Abu Bakr fought them in the righteous cause to keep the ummah on the straight way of Islam. During this time, some people left Islam because they had placed faith in Muhammad rather than Allah. Abu Bakr allowed them to leave peacefully but this did trouble him greatly. Right. However, those who left Islam and then became traitors to the Muslims by leading any armies into attacks against them were not spared and were sentenced to death as apostates. The definition of apostate is one who betrays the good faith of the community. Even today, most nations have death penalties for treason, and it was no different in those days. Now, one of the biggest legacies that Abu Bakr leaves is his advice for the Muslim army, which led to the amazing superiority and mercy in combat. He said, always fear Allah. He knows what is in men's hearts. Be kind to those who are under you and treat them well. Give brief directions. Directions that are too long are likely to be forgotten. Improve your own conduct before asking others to improve theirs. Honor the enemy's envoy. Maintain the secrecy of your plans. Always speak the truth so that you get the right advice. Consult your men when you are free to do so, and this will develop participation. Take suitable measures to keep a watch on the enemy. Be sincere with all of whom you deal. Give up cowardice and dishonesty. Give up bad company. Right, is that verse I pull up? So then, um, following the leadership of Abu Bakr was Umar al-Khattab. He was appointed as the successor by Abu Bakr, although many still believe that Ali or Jalal Anhu, the cousin and spiritual brother of Muhammad, peace be upon him, should have been named as Caliph already. How's this? Well, it was under the leadership of Caliph Omar that Islam spread to encompass what is now Iraq, Iran, and the entirety of all the Arabian lands all the way to the modern border of Greece. Mm. 
under his leadership, the general Khalid ibn al-Walid became even more successful in 